Cool. Um, so thank you guys for joining us for the last class of our Fashion Tech Accelerator. It's been so much fun doing this with you guys. Thank you for putting up with us as we've also learned with you. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's been an adventure hosting this and um, we've absolutely loved meeting everyone who's been a part of this class. Um, so as you guys know, the housekeeping rules, just put your phone um, on mute. Um, if you do have questions, put them in the comment box on the lower right hand side and then we'll answer those questions at the end. Um, so if you just type in your questions there, make sure to send those questions to everyone, not just one person. Um, and this is all being recorded so you can watch it after. Um, so our speakers today, um, we have an amazing group of speakers today. So we have Brooke joining us from Jewelbot. Um, Brooke, I'm sorry, I thought, I thought Sarah would be joining us, so she, <laughs> she's in there as well. Okay. Um, but um, she's going to tell you a bit about their Jewelbot that uh, they created, which is a wearable technology for young girls to get them um, excited and engaged with coding. Uh, an incredible, incredible company. Um, so it'll be really interesting hearing more about that. Um, Dan Steingart unfortunately cannot join us, but um, he did uh, say that he sends his regrets. His, his daughter actually uh, unfortunately has a fever tonight, so we had to go pick her up. Um, but Dan is working on um, wearable battery power, um, really fascinating work that he's doing at Princeton right now. Um, and so he's going to send along some information on that. Um, really, really cool stuff, so I encourage you guys to look at that. I'll put it into um, week eight readings. Um, and we also have Liz joining us from Way Up. Uh, and Liz is absolutely amazing. The Way Up platform is really cool. It allows you guys to find uh, campus jobs, campus opportunities um, that you can do while you're still at school. Um, so I know that we personally at Freeline, we posted internship opportunities on Way Up. Absolutely loved it. Um, and the students that we met through it are amazing. Um, so we'll hear about her story and, and a little bit more about Way Up. Um, so with that, I'll um, pass it off now um, to Brooke. So I'm just going to do the, the sharing uh, ability. Let's see. That should do it. Great. Hello. Can you see and hear me? Yep. All right, cool. Um, awesome. So awesome to be here. And I guess I'll share my screen now and get right into it. And please, uh, you know, ask me questions because, yeah, I'm just going to kind of go over our story and how we got to what we're doing. All right, let's see here. Nope, share. Yeah, cool. Great. So we're Jewelbox, a friendship bracelet for the smartphone era. Um, so, you know, girls love technology. I'm sure anyone who's ever been around a teenage or preteen girl knows they basically just like to text their friends all day long. 86% um, of girls send text messages to their friends several times a day. And I believe this is an old stat. I wouldn't be uh, surprised if it was more than that. Uh, it's their primary mode of convert, uh, conversation. Um, you know, but what we're seeing is girls aren't really learning about the inner workings of technology. They're using all these apps, but for the most part, they're, they're not building, they're not creating them. So are girls just not into STEM? No. <laughs> we found that this is really, really, really not true at all. Um, according to a 2012 study by the Girl Scout Research Institute, 74% of high school age girls are very interested in STEM. Uh, the difference is they're interested in STEM and art and drama and music and their friends. You know, these girls are not one dimensional. I think a lot of times there's been this kind of archetype of a programmer, the solitary, you know, interested in one thing, kind of antisocial nerd, and that's, and that's kind of not really uh, a thing anymore. Uh, you know, girls now are interested in science, they're interested in lots of different things. And my partner and I, though, uh, that because we love technology, we love science and in, in fashion and art and all sorts of other things. Um, prior to doing this, I started a company called Fascism, which is an, uh, an app and, and website where people could post photos of what they were wearing get feedback, get inspiration, uh, all in real time. Um, so I saw firsthand, you know, building a technology and how powerful it could be to, you know, connect people through fashion and art and creativity. Um, and, you know, I know that, you know, technology can do so many awesome things. Uh, my partner, Sarah, has been a software developer for 15 years. 
Uh, in 2010, she started a nonprofit called Girl Develop It, which teaches women how to code in in-person classes. Uh, so I think they've taught 60,000 women how to code in over 60 different cities. Um, you know, and something she really found is a lot of women there, you know, love technology, uh, love learning how to code, and were like, why didn't I know this was a thing when I was younger? This was not really on my radar as a kid, and that's honestly how I felt as well. Building my first company, I didn't know about computer programming. I dropped out of my computer science classes in college because, you know, frankly, I didn't have a frame of reference. I thought everyone uh, in them was so far advanced to me, and it just seemed like something that wasn't accessible. So yeah, this is a pretty grim chart. Um, you know, as women are making strides in medicine and law and all these other professional fields, the numbers of women actually pursuing computer science ha have been dropping. Uh, I would venture to say hopefully in the next few years you can see these numbers turn around, but it, it's really bleak, right? You know, the, the women were starting to pursue computer science and then, you know, kind of this gap arranged. And, you know, we were trying to figure out why is this? What is causing women not to study computer science? We know they're interested in technology. They're smart enough. They have the aptitude. Like, what, what's kind of going on here? Uh, you know, and this is a big problem. If girls are not studying these classes, they're not learning how to code, they are not going to be able to compete with their male counterparts for jobs. Um, STEM job growth is growing 77% year over year. Um, so it's, it's, a big, it's a big deal. The future of our economy is technology. So we really want girls to be able to compete for these, for these jobs, for the power. Um, you know, there's different theories on, on why this is, why women have not been studying computer science in the past, you know, 20, 30 years. Uh, one theory is that, you know, with the advent of the personal computer, a lot of the advertising and marketing has really been geared towards guys. Um, computing, building, science toys, these are all in the boy aisle, where traditionally the pink toy aisle was Barbies and ovens and things like that that weren't kind of the natural figure curiosity type. With many theories of what's going on here, this is one of them, and I, and I find it pretty compelling. So we want to change this, obviously. It's a big problem, and we see a huge opportunity here. And we know girls want to be uh, interested in technology, so how do we kind of bridge that gap? So Sarah and I talked to hundreds of girls uh, across the country about what they're excited about, um, you know, what they're into, and we found the same kind of things over and over. Creativity, their friends, connections, and, and expressing themselves. So we came up with Jewelbox, programmable jewelry aimed at teen girls. This is a super old prototype. It looks nothing like this anymore, but uh, you get the idea. Um, yeah, so basically Jewelbox work over a mesh network uh, using Bluetooth. So I can communicate with my friend bracelet to bracelet. If we have a phone that makes the distance longer, then we communicate with each other, but we don't even need phones. If we're all in class, we can communicate just with our bracelet. So this is a little animation of it vibrating. Uh, you can click that little button on top and you know send a vibration to a friend across the room. And yep. And when you're in proximity to your friend, you can program them so they light up together. And then when another friend comes, you can light up a different color. Ah, okay. <laughs> and so this is the app. So basically, to get the Jewelbox program and all set up, you have a basic app where you can connect your contacts, your friends, assign them to a color group, and assign your functionality. It doesn't really take any coding to get going. It's basically just setting it up. Basically, this is done so we can onboard girls really easily, so they can start using the product right away without having to code. You know, we really didn't want any kind of barrier to entry to use the product. The idea is to get them playing and having a full code, a cool toy that they can use to communicate with their friends. And then, once they get super hooked on the platform, they can plug their Jewelbot into the computer using the small USB port and, you know, download the Arduino's free software and actually write lines of code. Uh, you know, to get started, we have examples on our site that they can copy paste, they can ask us for help. We really don't want them to get stuck, but the idea is they can write uh, their programs and any, create any functionality they want. They can sync it with their weather app so they get a buzz if it's going to rain, or they can get a ping if someone if likes their Instagram or anything, really, they can think of. And, and, and the reason for this we found is, you know, people really learn by creating. Some people do learn in a classroom setting, but a lot of people learn how to code 
because they want to make something really awesome. You know, when we're, you know, 10, 15 years ago, a lot of people were learning to code to make their MySpace uh, pages really sweet. You know, they wanted to have all the colors and songs and all of that, so they learned HTML and CSS to make this actually happen. Same with Minecraft, you know, kids get really into it, and then they're teaching themselves Java to be able to customize their own mods in Minecraft. So we wanted to do the same thing, but geared a little more toward girls uh, on purpose. Uh, so we, we uh, did these Take Your Daughter to Hack Days in San Francisco and New York, got a, great, got a bunch of great sponsors, and girls basically um, used the same technology we're going to use to code, code Jewelbox to make their own wearable project. And we saw girls as young as eight figuring out the code and coding it in one day, and it was really, really heartening to see. It was really awesome. Uh, and this is us doing more user testing. All the functionality, design, everything we do comes from uh, user testing, talking to girls, high school, middle school, even younger than that, see what they like, how they communicate with their friends, and we're, this is not stopping. It's an ongoing process for us. Uh, we had a nice Kickstarter this um, summer. We raised almost 178000 um, uh, got some good press. It's really good, you know, trying to get our ideas out there and, and then create an initial support. And a little press, which is really nice and validating. Ah, uh, here's our video. <laughs> and that's it. Yes, that is all I have right now. Awesome. Thank you, Brooke. That was sure. really cool hearing a bit more um, about Toolbot. I might just um, quickly jump in with questions now. I don't see any questions typed out, but just um, while we have you here. So um, I'm curious um, about how you, I think a lot of students, um, are are thinking about potentially starting their own companies and looking at the potential of spaces. How did you guys ultimately uh, decide to start Jewelbots, and what was kind of like your very first step um, in, in creating the company? Yeah, so, um, you know, Sarah had the original idea a couple years ago, and I was in talks with her then. I joined a full-time about a year ago, and it really doesn't start off as a fully baked idea, right? So it started around wanting to create something that was kind of more geared towards girls that was a hardware project. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of quickly became, okay, so what can they use all the time around them? Maybe it'd be a wearable. Uh, so what kind of wearable can you feel and see at the same time? So that evolution kind of came to a bracelet. Uh, what the bracelet looked like, originally it was going to be a bracelet that lit up the same color as your clothes to match it. But after talking to girls, that idea wasn't very compelling to them. So we started to ask them, you know, what, well, what is interesting to you? Like, what would be kind of cool? And the whole lighting up the same color as your friends, that, that came just from them. That's not really a functionality I think an adult would, would stumble upon, but for girls in this age, you know, that, that's pretty compelling to them. So that's where we got that functionality. And the same with the design. The design all came from talking to them, you know, trying to make it smaller and smaller and smaller, you know, which is a technical challenge. But also we understand, you know, girls have small wrists. You don't, you don't want this big, clunky piece of, um, you know, plastic on your, on your hand. So how can we make that smaller and more beautiful while also having long battery life and having all the functions you want? So, you know, all these are a lot of iterations. And, you know, software takes a long time. Hardware takes a really long time. So it's it's been a it's been a long process trying to you know pare down the product and figure out exactly what we want to build. Definitely, and that's actually fascinating. So we we did a course on usability testing uh, and UX and UI design. I'm curious with a physical product with a wearable, um, how did you get it out to enough beta users? Would you have focus groups where the girls would come in? Would you send the watches out to them so they could like uh, play around yeah. with them? Yeah, so we send we send the bracelets out just um, not the actual working ones because we don't really have many of those to spare. But right. um, you know the actual uh, um, we would three D print a copy of what the actual charm looks like in the band and send those and ask for different ideas around aesthetics. Um, and then you know the clickable prototype right now, which is the app before we actually have that total app finished. Seeing how they actually um, go through the process and where they get stuck and actually physically watching them do that. Um, and then, then the functionality, yeah, getting them in the room and just going through a series of questions and, and watching them. It's difficult because, you know, I think testing, you know, you can test a button on a website and have your data, like, you know, 
60% of people clicked it when it was this color, and 50% clicked it when it was this color. It's a lot more scientific. Um, I think before, you know, you just have one prototype. Uh, it's, it's a little more difficult and just involves talking to more people and, you know, trying to make your best guess based on what data you can get. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Awesome. And I'll let, I'll let the students ask us their questions if they come up. We can uh, answer them after. Um, but I'll pass it off to, uh, oh, wait, sorry. Someone, uh, Laura just asked, um, which, program, which programming languages should girls focus on learning and where can they get more information Okay, so uh, yeah, so I, I mean, um, not to be too, too self-promotional, but if you go to our website, jewelbox.com, you can sign up for a newsletter, and anytime we do events or other hack days, we'll be putting it on there. Uh, also, we have some wearable kits where girls can practice making these products, and we're going to have more information on our website about the wearable kits. So basically, what those use and what our product will use, um, it's called the Arduino IDE, and that you can just basically download from for free um, from the internet, just just Google it, and basically your your Arduino uses C and C plus, um, and so that's what you'd be using to code these products. And there's a lot of help and tutorials, and we'll be offering more of those as well. Who would you say that C and C plus are the best languages? Not necessarily, but that's <laughs> that's kind of what you need to use to program the Arduino IDE. Which, um, if you want to use our product or other Arduino, which is kind of open source hardware, if you want to kind of get into any of that stuff, that's kind of the language you'd use. Um, you know, it depends on what you, you want to do, JavaScript or C, I mean, there's a, there's a ton of stuff depending on what you, um, depending on what you want. But I think there's a lot of tutorials online to get yourself started and figure out what excites you about programming to help you guide what kind of language, you, you know, if it's more front end or back end. Um, but I think starting with HTML, CSS is always a good bet to kind of ease your way in. Yeah, so I, I find what's fascinating about your product is it is combining uh, customization with wearables uh, and customization in terms of um, having the user actually like code in their own um, customized features. Um, do you see that you're the only guys kind of doing that, girls doing that <laughs> right right now um, in the space kind of combining this, this customization feature with a wearable product? Because I know one thing we wanted to focus on during this class was um, other, how they can be adopted by the fashion industry, which is which can be so um, the user can can want the product to be customized in certain ways. Yeah, I mean, as far as I know, there's not another commercial product that still has an open source kind of environment where they can create their own functionality. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's certainly uh, open source stuff and maker stuff going on where people are making things, but um, as far as a, as a commercial product, I'm not. I don't think there's anyone really happening right now, which is kind of an exciting space to be in. For sure. Definitely. Cool. Well, I'll um, pass it off to Liz. And again, if any other questions come in, we'll just answer them at the end. Cool. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you. So, Liz, I just made you a presenter. Um, if you click on the blue share screen button, it should. Uh, awesome. Uh, just give me one second. Yep. I'm just. Sorry about that. Perfect. Okay. Can you see my screen yep. right now? Awesome. Um, okay. So sorry, I'm just walking into it. Now you guys can see my office. <laughs> um, so hey everyone, I'm Liz Wessel. Um, I am one of the co-founders. I'm the CEO of a company called Way Up that I'm going to be talking to you about. Um, so first I just figured I would start with a video. I'm hoping that you guys will be able to hear it. Um, it's about a minute long. Can you just like stop me if you can't hear it for some reason? Because I know on the other video it was a little hard to hear. Hi, I'm Gregory. I'm a rising senior in college and I'm also the spokesperson of a website that used to be called Campus Job. Now it's known as whether you're looking to work part-time during the semester, find an internship over the summer anywhere across the country, or land a full-time job after graduation, Way Up is there for you. In fact, my friend Eric and I found the gig to make this video just by going on to wayup.com. Is that right, Eric? Yeah. For absolutely zero dollars. Are you serious? Yeah, completely for free. Really? Way Up will help you boost your resume while you make money. Now, are our jobs good? No. Our jobs are f***ing great. Look, don't rely on websites that look like they were built in the 90s or cardboard signs that hang in 
store windows. The cardboard signs are made from trees, dead yeah. trees. And yeah. I'm assuming you're the kind of person that doesn't want trees to <laughs> Or do you? Stop trying to get a job by begging your parents to introduce you to their dentist wife's father. I mean, you can get a job on your own based on your profile and what you're qualified for. Shh. What? Anyway, so um, it keeps going, but I wanted to introduce uh, Way Up by showing one of the videos. Hopefully you guys could hear that. Um, so what is Way Up? It's uh, now the largest online marketplace exclusively for college students to get part-time jobs, summer internships, or for full-time jobs after graduation. Um, a lot of students refer to us like the Common App, but for applying for jobs. Um, so you fill out your profile once, and you look through a bunch of jobs, and when you see a job you like, you click apply, and that's pretty much it. Um, and every student who sees, uh, who's on our site, if you see a job, you know you're qualified for it, because brands will actually say, only show my jobs to students who match the following criteria. So for example, if you're only looking to hire freshmen, they'll say, only show my job to freshmen, or if you're only looking to hire people who speak Spanish, um, it will only show to students who said that they speak Spanish on their profile. So that's a little bit about what the experience is like for the students. Um, we have hundreds of thousands of students at over 2,900 campuses, and we have 900 campus reps at about 500 campuses throughout the country. So it's been a really fun experience getting to hire students who have literally been promoting us to their friends as the site where their friends can get jobs. Um, so we're getting students on our site get jobs, which has been pretty um, extraordinary and, and exciting. And it's, it's been fun to help students, you know, kind of start their career while they're still in college. Um, and there's anything from summer internships to part-time jobs to campus rep opportunities, et cetera. So just a little bit, it's a little hard to see the McKinsey logo, um, but a little bit about how we got started in 60 seconds. Um, my co-founder, JJ, and I met at the University of Pennsylvania, um, where we did not study technology, neither of us. We studied like math and linguistics and Japanese and uh, management, uh, operations, et cetera. So nothing having to do with this. Um, but we both saw firsthand this need for um, for like college students to get work experience because you really can't graduate in this day and age and not have had at least one and ideally two or three internships or part-time jobs during school. Um, and meanwhile, we both were at these kind of cool companies. We, I went to work at Google and JJ went to work at McKinsey, a management consulting company. And we constantly were told by students that, um, you know, they wanted to apply for a job, but they didn't realize they had to apply like nine months before summer even started. And, and all these ridiculous things. And we thought that kind of campus recruiting was um, not necessarily doing everything it should do. So we decided to start what was called Campus Job. And then um, about eight months later, we changed our name to Way Up because Campus Job sounded too, uh, it, it sounded like it was too much just for Campus Job because of the name. And we knew that. We were so much more than that. We decided to change our name and our interns. We actually hired through our own website, came up with the name Way Up. Um, in the middle of this, we raised just over $9 million in venture capital funding. Um, we're based in New York City, hence the taxi cab in the background of the slide. We have a team of about 30 people who all sit in the office that I just showed you, et cetera. Um, so why students use Way Up? Whether it's to pay back their student loans, to afford college, um, just to build your resume like I talked about, and also to not have to rely on mom and dad. Um, I have another video, but I don't know necessarily that um, it's the best time to play it just because of the sound. So I figured I would just end with talking for a minute about um, my kind of route to get here because a lot of people uh, are usually interested in like why I'm so passionate about this. Um, so for me, I actually started a business in college, and I know some of you guys are interested in starting businesses or already have started businesses um, in college, and it was really hard to hire students. You shouldn't ever have to start a business and not be able to hire interns, even if they're your friends. Or for me, um, I started a business where uh, it was like a, it, we created these cards that were discount cards where you could save money on your college campus. Um, and I always wanted to hire students to go around and sell the cards, and um, students needed the cash, and they wanted to work for me, but it was so hard to find the students, um, so I would have to spam, like, sorority listers and fraternity listers and, and email students throughout the country once I started franchising my business to other schools, and I realized that it was kind of inefficient and silly that I was doing all that and that there should be a place for me to just post a job um, and know that I'm going to get quality college students and not, just, like, random people off of Craigslist who are, you know, kind of creepy and just want to hang around college girls, which 
obviously, unfortunately, is the case of some of you guys right now. So I decided, I'm, uh, you know, this is something that I'm really passionate about. Um, and just to speak a little bit about, you know, what you got, what I recommend for you guys. Obviously, our site has plenty of jobs, including lots of fashion and beauty companies using us, um, including jewelry companies using us to hire everything from summer interns to campus reps. And a campus rep job is often a really good way to get your foot in the door with a business. I was a campus rep for Anheuser Busch, which is the company that creates Budweiser, and they pretty much like were ready to extend me an offer and have me go through the whole full time process just because of that. So I definitely, and a lot of Google uh, campus reps become uh, Google full-time employees. So I definitely suggest, um, you know, trying to get your foot in the door with brands early on. And uh, whether or not you want to try it through way up or through some other means, definitely go for it. Um, and also it helps you with kind of figuring out what you really want to do with your life. So I didn't even know what marketing was. I, I never understood what the term marketing meant. Um, and then when I did marketing for Ann Heather Bush, that's when I realized that I really wanted to do marketing. Um, for a living, and that's why I applied to work at Google and their marketing department, and that's what I ultimately ended up doing. So, uh, so that one part-time job during school kind of changed my life. Not to mention, made me a few thousand dollars pretty easily. So, and um, that is kind of the presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions at all. So, I have a question. Um, you, you did a great job of outlining kind of uh, some jobs that you had that got you to where you are. If, if some of these students were thinking about starting their own companies, what would be some on-campus opportunities um, that they could look to um, find that would give them some exposure and some better understanding of, you know, uh, structure of a company and starting a company? My biggest suggestion, 100%, is to work for another startup. Um, I Worked at Google, which was awesome, and it gave me so much experience to start this company, but I almost wish I had some kind of internship experience at a startup, so I could have seen it firsthand, um, you know, how culture changes when you go from two to four to eight people, let alone to 30 people, and, and you know, how what, what kind of things the CEO has to deal with when fundraising, and what getting press is like, et cetera. So, I can't recommend enough um, to work for a startup, and even if it is like a campus ambassador job, which I'm only bringing up because they're kind of easier to get usually. Um, and, and if you're somewhat social, it's, it's really easy to get that. Um, but if you do some kind of campus master job, definitely part of the interview is you should ask, like, can I speak to the CEO if I perform really well? Or maybe you do a summer internship or an internship over winter break while you're home. So uh, I just recommend, like, working for a startup uh, if possible, even if it's a virtual job and you never even physically go to the startup office. And then some of the people, too, who are part of the Accelerator um, have actually graduated, have full-time jobs, and they're actually taking the Fashion Tech Accelerator just to learn a bit more about the industry because they may actually make a shift into a different industry. For someone like that, could they use Way Up um, to find opportunities that they, where they could kind of like dip their toe into a different industry without necessarily completely switching their job yet? Unfortunately, right now, like today, we you have to have a .edu. So if you still have your .edu, then yes, it will work. But it's not. Uh, so that I say today with a big emphasis on today because I think in a few weeks we're going to launch sign up with Facebook, and you can say that you're a new grad and you can use the platform as a new grad because a lot of the brands who've been using us have said flat out like, listen. A lot of brands say, I'm only looking for seniors who are graduating but have not graduated yet. But a lot of brands say, like, I don't care if they're two years out of school or if they're, you know, if they're a month out of school. I'm just looking for someone entry level. So um, I, I definitely think that that could be another good opportunity. Uh, so wait for a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I don't see um, any more questions, and I think we actually may be able to wrap it up a little earlier. I don't know. Do you guys have any closing thoughts or anything? All right, I think we're I think we're good. Thank you so much, Liz and Burke, for yeah, joining thank us so today. Much. Thank you so much. It was great. Yeah. Take care. Send along um, the recording once we have them on YouTube. Great. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you. you.